driving around the coast from point to point with the fishing WA machine in tow certainly gives you time to take in the magnificent scenery of WA's Pilbara region. Exmouth is one of our country's great fishing towns and the Northwest Cape separates the Exmouth Gulf from the famous Ningaloo Reef with its spectacular diving and of course fishing, which is great from both a shore and a boat. Our host in Exmouth was Pete Meyer from Exmouth Game Fishing Charters, who specialised in sport fishing for marlin, sailfish and big Spanish mackerel. As we arrived, the crew were making sure that Indazara was sparkling and ready for two guys from the city itching to get stuck into one of the ocean's fastest fish. The marina in Exmouth is the best we encountered in the northwest, and it's due in no small part to the thriving prawn fishery that supports many trawlers. Pete rigged plenty of mullet baits, which we were going to troll using the outriggers on the game boat, which separate your baits evenly in what's called the spread. What we do is we'll put your line through there and we can set the pressure on this yeah. to light, heavy or whatever we want it. So with this line, or set it just so it pulls out. Okay. Then it gets the bait away from the boat yeah. and um, lets it swim in clear water. Can you run through it, what we're actually doing? Well, what we are, we've got a shoal here. Um, we've got four baits running at the moment at the back. Yep. Uh, we've got three swimming mullet and one skipping mullet. And hopefully this time of the evening, if we work around the edge of the shoal, uh, we may pick up a nice mackerel. Uh, we've got some long tail tuna that are working as well. And maybe, if we're lucky, we may even raise a sailfish. Right here, we're right on the top of the shoal now in five metres. As you can see on the sounder, there's yep. a few fish starting to happen, mid-surface, mid-water fish. Uh, as we get another 100 or so metres across, it should start dropping off into about uh, 13 to 18 metres. So we're going to try and work along the edge of the shoal and hopefully pick something up along there. So, obviously from England, I've never... What is a shoal? I, I don't really quite... I, is it just a hump on the bottom of the ocean or...? Yeah, it's like a big um, formation of coral and bommies and um, oh, huge rocks that just come up and on the, around the edge there seems to be a lot of flat sand in this area and it's just sort of in the middle like a little atoll. Right. And the fish seem to congregate there. You can see there's some fish now on the sounder. Yep. Yes, sir. No sooner were we on top of the shoal when my mullet got hammered by something so fast it had to be a mackerel. But then again, everything's fast up here. Nothing left to do now but hold on tight and pump that fish into the boat before he decides he'd rather be somewhere else. Now you can see here that I'm lifting the rod well above 45 degrees, which is wrong. Sometimes you don't realise you're doing it, but you can't transfer enough power to the rod this way. As the Mackie comes closer to the boat, it's easy to rush and make a mistake, but remember that they've usually got one more run left. Max are shaped like torpedoes, and the pointy end is just as dangerous. Spaniards have a set of teeth even Dracula would be proud of, so keep them well away from any part of your body, or it might just go missing. Wow, they told me the fishing was fantastic in Exmouth, and uh, Spanish mackerel action at its best. Thanks a lot, Pete. Well, that's one Mackie caught and released, but like a good potato chip, it's hard to stop at just one. So he set the rigger again and went looking for more. But surely we needed a bit more hardware in the water. Okay, this is what we call a witch doctor. It's had a few mods done to it. It's got a few sinkers in there to rat, make it rattle. Yep. Um, it's got the mirrors on the sides which flash. Uh, we'll drop that out the back. We'll probably get a mackerel come up and uh, have a go at it, or if there's any sails around, they'll come up and try and smack it around with their bill a bit. Well, they'll actually uh, have a go at that. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. We might even see one come to the back of the boat. Yeah. Usually they get hammered. This is the second one we've got. The last one we've got, it's got a lot of teeth marks in it. All oh, right. But they seem to work quite well. Okay. So we'll give it a shot. Yeah. So that doesn't matter which way it swims or anything, as nah. long as it's always doing something. 
The water glassed off and Jesus birds walked around on it looking for an easy meal. But it wasn't long before the action got even hotter. Boom! He's got it! I'm on toe! Yeah. Get the weight on him! Yeah. Just put that lever up can more, Yeah, got it. Oh, you got a mac? I have. Oh, I got a mac <laughs> We saw a mac come up on the surface under Ian's skip bait, and I was running my CD18 in close to the witch doctor, so I dropped it back where his mac was, thinking there could be some more. And, and they sure was. enough, yeah, <laughs> it both went off. They both went off at the same time, and we're both on some Spaniards, I would say, which is what we came here for. Oh, his tail's coming out of the water there, Steve. Awesome. As I take the weight of the lady, you just shorten her up a bit more. Yeah. Shorten her up. That's yeah. the way, Ian. Shorten her up. Nice, steady pressure. How are you going there, Steve? Yeah, mate, I've got my feet, but I'll keep it out wide. Okay. Now, that last Mackie was pretty good natured about the whole thing, but we couldn't get two in a row that wanted to come quietly, could we? Mackie, oh my baby. god. Nice, Mackie. <laughs> I think you might be a taker. Oh, Pete, oh, Pete, just Keep your head in the water, watch it. Watch your hands there, Roscoe. No, hang on, hang on. Let's let him calm down. How's the teeth, Matt? Will he bite you? Oh, yeah. <laughs> He's a bit aggressive, isn't he? My God. Hey, don't put your hands there in your mouth at all, guys. Step right. right out the way. Nice fish, Ian. Yeah. Well done, Ian. Well done. That's the biggest fish I've caught. <laughs> okay, let's go for the second one. Excellent. Well done, mate. Thanks for that. It's exciting stuff when both rods go off like they did. And it's very tempting to just try and crank your fish in first. But with mackerel, they're not really going to do a lot to you. So you don't have to drag them in by the skulls and try and rip the skeleton out of their mouth. I was quite happy to keep mine swimming out in the distance so Ian could safely land his because two Macs on board at the same time is not really a whole lot of fun. Nice. Okay, Pete, steady her out, mate. I think uh, you want it bigger than the last one? Yeah, I think you want to keep this one on the table because he might be a little bit tired. You boys want to make that decision? Yeah, mate, I think we'd better take him in. Whoa, well, we go! <laughs> He's not done. Right. Did we just say he was tired? You got it. <laughs> The Spaniard is often the first sport fish a new angler will catch, and that's why we all love them. Just remember, when you get your first one to the boat, keep your hands to yourself. The most common question emailed to us at fishingwa.com is how do I catch a herring? So we thought we'd answer it by showing you just how many different ways you can do it. Well Bruce, you get my gear out for me and I'll tell the folks at home exactly how to set up a rig for herring. Now for herring you're going to need a burly cage. I run it up and down the main line and I stop it with this large clip swivel here. The leader is two kilos through to a Gamagatsu shiner hook. It has a wide gape and the wide gape's ideal for herring because they'll throw that hook, if it's a narrow gape, very easily. This tends to stop them doing that. All right, Bruce, you got my gear together, mate? Oh, I'm not a pack horse, you know. We mixed a burley of pollard and water and took our place on the rocks. All right, we've done our burley, we've baited up. Let's get out there and get some herring. And we'll show these young fellas how to do it, eh? Yeah, no worries, Steve. <laughs> okay, hey, you jumped the gun. <laughs> now, the tide's coming in, it's just turned. So what I'm doing is casting to my left and it will drift around to the right. That way I'm not going to tangle over everybody. 
Burley is very important here because it brings fish and keeps them in the area. Oh, look at that. Oh, side by side. Mate, what bait are you using? Oh, I'm just using a little bit of squid. A little bit of squid. I'm using wogs or maggots. Now, you may wonder why herring love maggots so much. They're pretty disgusting, but uh, the tackle stores breed them for you these days. They actually get the taste for maggots down the southwest where there's heaps of weed rotting on the banks down there. And I want another one here. Now, they actually get a taste at a very early age. So by the time they've reached Mandra here, they absolutely love them. Now a day like today, it doesn't really matter what bait you're going to use, you're going to catch them on anything. But when they're fussy, maggots are just about the best bait around. Now in most cases with these shiner hooks, they don't only hook the fish for you, but you'll get them in the scissors of the jaw there. The hook comes out quite easily, just like that, straight out. So now I'm going to release the fish, it's going to be fine. We've not done any damage, we haven't got it through the eye, so if we're going to catch and release like we're doing here, straight back in it goes. Well the herring are really going off on the bait, but I'm going to make my life easy by changing to a fly. Now don't be scared to tie a fly onto your spinning gear. I'm keeping my burly cage and I'm just tying it on the end of my trace that I was fishing with bait. I've made it though a heavier trace. I've gone from two to four kilo so it doesn't tangle as I skip it through the water. Okay, let's see how we go with this fly now. I've cast a fair way out and I'm letting the burly cage drift down and letting the burly dissipate. Now I'm going to start a jerky retrieve to imitate a bait fish. Yep, now I'm on. I saw Matt was skipping a fish across the surface there that he had hooked, so I cast the fly right behind that. Because there's usually one or two following. Oh, he's coming out of the water. What a beauty. Now he might come off. I've got Bruce's line. And there you go. It works on the fly as well. No smoke and mirrors. These herring love flies. Even if you use them on spinning gear like this, you don't have to be a fly fisherman. You can use them on spinning gear and the herring will still love them. They're just like lures. What I'm going to show you now is how to fish for herring using these metal bait fish imitations that we call slices. This one in particular is called a laser. And, uh, the herring really love the blue, but it's also got a bit of pearl flash, which will attract them from a distance when the sun hits it. Now let's have a few casts with this and see whether they attack that like they've been attacking the bait. All right, well, we'll have a couple of flicks with the metal lure. See if I can't show you how these work. These, of course, imitate small bait fish. The trick to working a metal lure is to make it look like a bait fish. Let it sink down, just so we've got a bit of angle so it's not skipping across the surface and get down nice and close to the water. Keep your rod low, just twitch it back. Oh, he's hit that lure hard. Oh. Oh, he's only lip hooked. Will he get him in? Oh, I don't know if I'll get him in. No. No, that's the danger. Let's see if we can get one out of the water to show the folks at home. Oh, yep, yeah, here we go. I'm going to land this one, Bruce. I'm going to land him. Oh, yeah. Right on. <laughs> oh, I got one out of the water. <laughs> Good catch. Oh, now see that one, oh, he's got all three hooks, but the barbs are crushed, so they should come out quite okay. Oh, he wanted that. And there you go. What a beauty, eh? Now, 
Now, if you haven't any luck for a couple of casts, try some variations. Cast it out further. Let it sink down further. Wind it faster, wind it slower. Try anything. You never know what's going to work for you. Now, a lot of people get confused telling herring and juvenile salmon apart because they are very closely related. An easy way is to have a look at the eye. Herring have a much larger eye and salmon or salmon trout, which is what we call juvenile salmon, have a small yellow eye. So once you know what you're looking for, it's quite easy to tell them apart. So we'll pop this one back. There you go, little fella. Okay, lastly today we're going to show you how to catch herring on a fly rod from the rocks rather than a fly on spinning gear. And it is actually possible, but you've got to make sure that you, you look behind you so you don't hook people in the side of the head when you cast. The fly we're going to use is called an epoxy glassy. These things are absolutely dynamite on herring. Most flies will work, perhaps even a uh, green crazy Charlie or something like that, but I love these epoxy glassies. They glisten, the herring chase them just like they chase a small white bait and I reckon we are going to catch one on the fly right now. Now working the fly off the rocks like this, it's an ideal time to have a go at the herring when they've come right in close to follow the burly. They're too close for a lure and bait might just sink down and snag me up. So, with a fly, it will just sink gently down next to those rocks. And there's a lot of herring right under these rocks. It's just a matter of whether I can get them out or not. Oh, oh, yep, oh, we're on, we're on, here we go. Just as I suspected, they were right in close. Oh, oh, he's come off. It's all right, I know where they are now. No need to cast a mile. If you're gonna take on a fly fishing experience off the rocks like this you got to make sure there's not too many people around so probably do it on a weekday my good friend Bruce is throwing burly in from the side trying to get the fish within casting distance of my fly I'm keeping my back cast nice and high and shooting out across the water oh yep 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 Oh, gee, they go well on the fly. Oh, don't come off, don't come off, don't come off. Here we go. Well, how many different ways can you catch a herring, eh? They're just the ideal fish. If you want to spin for them, fly fish for them, bait fish for them, whatever you want to do, the herring's for you. I think we'll put him back, eh? 